talk to you today about uh, the foundations of Satan. Do you know Satan has his own foundations and uh, he has his own religion? Okay. Uh, but many are worshiping Satan, but they have not even have, have, uh, they have not even understood that they are doing it. And Satan is very, very smart. You see, people think that uh, Satan is just any other loser out there who doesn't know what he's doing. He's very smart. And remember one thing that uh, he was not uh, the power which he had and the, and the shapes that he could change himself. Because remember, he was a, he was a, uh, he was a cherubim in heaven. So he had uh, different faces, the face of an ox, the face of a man, the face of a, of a, um, uh, of a bird, and also the other face. Therefore, I don't remember. I'll, I, I'll teach you that later. Now, remember, he still has all this power. He still has all these things and he still has all this wisdom that he had. And this is the same wisdom which he has used over the days to, to, to deceive man. And I want to show you his foundations because uh, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Okay? So, the foundations of Satan. What does he really, really do? Let's, let's see how he deceived man from the beginning and what tricks he used. So that we can dissect them right here, right now. Okay? Now the Bible says in Genesis 3.1, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Okay? Subtle means he was smart, you know. He was a, a different. He, he was more knowledgeable than any beast of the field. Which was a, or cunning, things like that. Than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. Okay? And he said unto the woman, yeah, you see the first thing that Satan uh, starts with? Positivity. He gives you a positive vibe. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, we can do this. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. But, you see, yeah, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, what is he trying to put in here? Now, first of all, we have seen that he comes with positive talks, positive thinking, positive vibes. And then he brings in something else we call skepticism. This is skepticism, okay? Doubting truth. You start doubting. You start questioning the Bible. You start questioning things. Is it really true that God said that you don't eat from every uh, tree? Is it really true that uh, that Bible is uh, what they say it is? Is it really true that Jesus is coming back? Is it really true that, um, and of course he will start with the, yeah, of course we have heard Jesus is coming, but is really, is it really true? He will first give you a positive vibe, and then he will bring skepticism unto you, doubting. You start, he starts asking you, you mean uh, going to the church and listening to the word of God? There's no other way that you, you, you can serve God instead of reading the Bible? Is there no other way? Is it really that he said that you have to read that Bible every day? Is it true that he said that you have to walk with God every day? Is it really true that you don't, uh, you know, you, you don't have to sin this one time? Is it really true? You see exactly what he teaches people? Skepticism. And that's exactly what he was saying here in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, has God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, that's the first trick. He brings doubt, skepticism. Now, the next one, he brings in something we call textual criticism. He starts uh, questioning the text. Do you understand right now we have uh, almost uh, 200 uh, different types of Bibles? Why don't they agree? It's because all of them, they are criticizing the Bible. They, they have some criticism. They are criticizing. And many are saying different things and different things and different things. And you ask yourself, how comes all people don't read the King James Bible? And they know that's, a, that's the original authorized Bible. But they are all criticizing the Bible in different ways. Have you seen this one? So these are trick of Satan to criticize the text of God, what God has said. Let's continue. Let's see. Genesis 3, uh, Genesis 3, uh, 1 to 4, we have, we have seen there. 
Now, we have already seen. Has he said that you will not eat of every tree of the garden? Okay. That is the word of God. Questioning the word of God. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruits of the tree of the garden. Uh-huh. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. You see, something that Eve has done already, because of listening to this and not saying as the Bible says, and saying, no, God has said, don't eat. You see, Eve has started lying. This is a lie. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Where did God say that you don't touch it? This is a lie. You see, when you start criticizing the word of God, you start lying. You start adding words in the Bible. And also, removing words. God did not say, lest you die. He said, you will die. Lest you die is diluting it. Is diluting the word of God. God did not say, if you do it, probably it will happen. Probably you will die. Yeah, you may die. Lest you die. You see, reducing the word of God. And also adding to the word of God. Neither shall you touch it. Are you seeing this one? He, she starts criticizing the word of God. Of course, Satan is criticizing and because satan has seen this 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 eve has already you know has already now gotten into my point i've already start, I've, I've i've brought doubt and she has started now you know listening to me see what satan says here and the serpent said unto the woman you shall not surely die you see criticizing the word of god criticizing the text of god this of course Look at this quote. They, they ask, what is textual criticism? This is a science of restoring original words of a manuscript that have been altered. Restoring. This is exactly what Satan was doing and Eve at the garden. They were trying to restore the original words of God. And saying that they have been altered. That is what we call textual criticism. And this is a trick used by Satan so much. Look at the look at the world today. What are they doing? They are writing their own versions of the Bible. I've seen so many people are writing their own. Uh, you know, we want to we want to criticize the Bible. I want to give you another view of the Bible. Did God tell you that you give Him another view? No, He said preach the word only. He did not say start uh, explaining some things, uh, start uh, you know saying this and this, blah blah blah, all, all those kind of things, and adding some things. Don't criticize, don't add, don't minus the word of God. Okay? Are you understanding the point? Now, the next thing which Satan used is something we call the new age. Have you heard about the new age? Something new. Something new. See, verse 5. Verse 5. This is where we see the introduction of the new age. For God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You see, new age, you shall be like gods. You shall be enlightened. You sh your eyes will be opened. There will be a new age in you. You shall understand some things that you don't understand right now. Your eyes will be opened. You see? You see exactly what uh, Satan is. And the new age is from Satan. And when you see all these new age preachers, uh, uh, preaching about new age please run away from them those are doctrines of devils that your eyes will be opened something will come up you know it will be different from what you think you, 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 there is an awakening spiritual awakening you see all these things that Oprah says about awakening and Joy Lostin and all these uh, 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 T.D. Jakes and all these other bunch of uh, 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 hypocrites what they teach this is from Satan, these are doctrines of devils. For you know, God does know that in the day that you, thereof, you, you eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. New age. Now let me show you something else. From there, he brings in the higher education. Don't think that education is there to help you with anything. Just go and see my other video I did yesterday about... Uh, 
what they, 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 what they taught you in school about the earth is all lies. The, the earth is flat. All they want to do is to support evolution with these higher educations that they try to lie to people. Now, let me show you how higher education started from the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Look at the same verse again. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof. Now, what does that mean? They are saying there is another enlightening, another higher different learning, understanding which will come when you do something. You see, Satan is saying the day you will eat is like the day you will understand these things. You will have some higher, learn, higher education. You will have some higher knowledge than the other people. You will be knowledgeable even much more. You see, higher learning where it started in the Garden of Eden. Okay, have you seen that? Then the other thing is Satan, after bringing higher education, he brings something else called uh, worldliness or temptations. Okay, you start loving the world. Immediately after that, Satan is very cunning and he knows he wants to give you that desire of the world to love the world more. Let's see, let's see. And of course, this one has been told in the Bible, don't love the world. Don't be of the world. Let, let me show you. Let's see. The last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life coming up. Okay? Genesis 3, 6. See, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, the woman saw the last of the eyes. The last of the eyes. The eyes started seeing something. When she saw, you see, the last of the eyes coming up, when she saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant unto the eyes, pleasant unto the eyes, this is wanting to please the flesh, okay? Last of the flesh, last of the eyes, she saw, last of the fl uh, flesh, it is pleasing, it is pleasing to the eyes. And the tree desired to make one wise, you see. The tree would make you wise. The pride of life, she would be wise. She would be wise. She will not be just the way she has been. She would be wise, you see. The last of the eyes, the last of the flesh. And the pride of life. And the tree desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. And they did eat. Have you seen the last of the eyes? The the pride of life and uh, you know the last of the eyes the, the last of the flesh and the pride of life have you seen them in the garden of eden all this taught by satan have you seen this one you may ask are those sins is the bible saying that the those are sins let me show you first john first john uh 2 16 2 16 let me show you for those who think is it really a sin See what the Bible says. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of this, but is of the world. You see, this is a doctrine of devil. And when you see people having these lusts, they desire these things. These are foundations of Satan. These are foundations of Satan. He wants people to be confused and to live that way. Now, after that, there's something else which Satan was bringing. Equality and feminism. Remember, the woman was created as a helper. And she was created to help the man. The woman and the man are not in the same level. The Bible says that the, the woman and the man, the husband should love the, the woman the way Christ loved the church. Because Christ is an example of the man. Christ loved the church until he died. He had to, you, you know, he had to shed his, his life for you. And the same thing has to happen also to you. You have to make sure that you love the woman so much that you can lay your life away for the woman. And what should be the responsibility of the woman? To be submissive as the church is submissive to Christ. Are you seeing this one? But now Satan introduced equality. How did Satan introduce equality? Let me show you how Satan introduced equality. In Genesis, in uh, Genesis 3, 6, uh, 3 verses 6, 
Genesis 3, 6. See what the Bible says here. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that was pleasant to the eyes, and, and the tree to be desired to make one white, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and did what? And gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. You see what the woman did? What the woman did? She gave. She gave to the man. She became now equal with the man. Instead of being an helper, she now started making the rules. And what happened? The whole world fell. Everybody fell. Are you seeing this one? Everybody fell. This is exactly what the Bible is talking about. About equality is not good. And even the Bible has spoken about this in the book of uh, 1 Timothy. That the woman should know her place. 1 Timothy uh, 2 uh, 11. Let's, let, let me show you what the Bible says. That the woman has a place. Let the woman uh, learn silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach or unsub authority over the man. But to be in silence. Okay, why? For Adam was, not, was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Are you seeing? Because of this feminism trying to be equal with the man, she was deceived. And now we are in a total mess because of her. And if, she, if a, the woman takes a position, it's so beautiful, she'll be protected, she'll stay there. And she'll be loved like Christ loved the church. And the, the man will take his position and do as Christ has shown us. Are you there and you don't know, you don't understand these foundations of Satan? Are you there and you don't understand those foundations? Please be wise. Wake up. Wake up. And if you're still there and you're not saved, remember, the gospel is the one which saves you. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about what Christ did for you. The gospel which was preached unto you, which you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved. If you keep in memory what... I preached unto you unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received. How that Christ laid his life for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you believe what Jesus did for you. You believe it. You understand it. And you believe it. Then you are saved. And you stay away from these foundations of Satan. Stay away from the new age. Stay away from questioning the Bible. Stay away from all these things. Which they are trying to bring to you. New age and all these things. And loving the world and lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. Please stay away from these things. And be saved. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. And also you can subscribe to watch more videos. Which we post every day. And also you can share to other believers. So that they can be able to understand. God bless you and have a blessed time.